What's up guys, and thanks for joining to Latero's Pokemon League Challenge. I'm going against the Brawl, or the Fairy Guy, really, or the Fairy Gym Leader, I guess I should say. Uh, also known as Defecto9, and he is a very, very tough opponent. If he's not the toughest one of the Gym Leaders, consider my typing. And I talked with Verlet about this, that fair typing might just be the most overpowered um, Gym Leader, really, because the typing is very, very vast and very, very strong, really. And look at my opponent's team, he's bringing, like, the real deal here. Uh, he got the UU Togetic, he got the uh, OU Asmaril, NU Gramble, uh, OU Klefki, I'm just gonna say OU to everything, but of course Clefable and the Gardevoir are also OU pokes. And I did fear Clefable a lot there, because Clefable could be Magic Guard Cosmic Power, or it could be the Unaware Cosmic Power, both of them being very, very threatening, and I have to find a way to actually threaten him out. I myself, you know, I got that golden opportunity to use my sand team all over again, and I really felt that I know it has limits for sure, but I hope that my intellect will take me a little further in this tourney or Pokemon League challenge. And other than that, it was just a good excuse really to use these guys again because I really like this team, and I'm glad to actually be able to do other things with them besides, you know, mixed here. And uh, what else can I say? There are a few differences with them, but not a lot. And also, I got to use another Pokemon too because you get to, to decide uh, or you get the chance to use uh, seven different Pokemon. So I have one in backup which are somewhat threatening or more menacing. And I'm really so sorry I didn't use him here because I could actually use the shared force that that Pokemon brought. But other than that, this was actually a very, very good battle. This went for 62 turns, so it's a real long one. But damn, was it entertaining. So it's really speed up at a few parts because it's really, really stally. But other than that, like I said, it's a very, very good battle, and enjoy, guys. So right at the beginning, I really just felt, let's get off my deck trick, you know, doing the Protect Mega Evolve, see what that goes for. Well, the problem is that Trance is trancing my Lightning Rod, and that's a huge problem, because that means I can't Bolt Switch out. And, of course, I see that, so I'm just gonna go for Plex, see what it wants to lock himself into. Luckily for me, it goes for Zyshock, so I know that I can actually bring my Dew Blade and pretty much force him out here. And Psyshock, well, of course, doesn't do too much. I'm just gonna go for Save Iron Head, which actually can deal a lot of damage on any of his pokes. So, the way Rod in Clefable, I'm pretty sure that he will most definitely go for Flamethrower. He's just gonna bring Manton here and wall that out. And yeah, that doesn't do anything now, does it? So, anyway, I had to speed out this part because I did go for Toxic. The sad part about the Toxic is, of course, it is the Magic Guard. So, there is no means that that Toxic actually will affect it. Uh, and of course I don't have Venoshock on any of my pokes, I can't deal with that. So I'm just gonna go back and forth and he will actually keep going for Cosmic Power. And uh, I'll just go right back into Giggle, this, you know, doing the Rock Slide. Really, really feel that I should probably have Stone Edge on this guy now. And the reason I just go back to uh, Bugra or my Hippodorn is because uh, as long as the Sandstorm is up, his Moonlight won't recover as much damage. So I'm trying to uh, force him here to... Um, or rather, I should say, I'm PP stalling him, because that's the only thing I really can do. Sadly, I get my man time burn in this process. It won't matter too much, but it's annoying. And, of course, my Giggle has paid a high price and is nearly dead after this rampage when his forces switch out. So anyway, I went for an earthquake, and I will actually decide to stay in here and go for another one, hoping that he was the Belladrum set, because, well, it's Flaming Axel did a number on me. But, of course, it's Choice Bandage. And it did well, well above my comfort zone, and I'm very forced to switch out there. But consider the damage, I know he chose bad, because a water culture do around 50%, even with huge power. So I decided to switch out my man time. Like I said, I know it's bandaged, so I can wall that out. So I actually decided to stay in and go for a skull here, just because, you know what, I really, really didn't see any other way of doing that. But he predicted that really, really well, going to his guard of all, force getting the water absorbed. Um, it won't matter though, it's still at full health, but still, it's walled out by it, so I should have definitely gone for a Toxic if I thought about it. So, yeah, I'm definitely forced to switch out here. I got into Bugra, hoping for him to go for a Thunderbolt, and this was a very good key play from my side. We still decide to go for that Mega Guard of War, and he goes for the Thunderbolt, which is incredible, because that means I get the Sandstorm up, and my Bugra gets some HP back, plus I can sack up Vulcan, which I know. Has done a very fair game here, bringing the playable down to a range where he can actually take it out. Really annoying though, because he could actually be the one that could probably be taken out the target tick in this game. 
So anyway, it goes for Cliff Key. Uh, Retaliate does 40-ish percent. I know it's probably gonna set up here. So I actually took this opportunity to go back into Bugra and actually go for a slack up here because I really didn't care, to be honest. He could go for light screens and anything like that. And uh, I felt that I was actually somewhat fine. So go to Flinch here. Kind of generic name. Uh, really just getting like the heads up what it is all about, of course. So I feel, you know what? Probably gonna go for an air slash, most likely. And I know that Ether can take that. But he gets a crit. And that is very frustrating because I know an Iron Head can easily take it out. So I'm forced to go into Barus here and just go for a safe uh, Volt Switch, to be honest. And of course, it switch out because, well, let's face it, he got both Asimur and Clefable at low HP. They both are down for count, so it's a very good play on my opponent's part. I myself go back into Booger, of course, getting that Sandstream up. Because it's gonna help me so much this game. And he'll go back into his Gardevoir. You know, Gardevoir is probably the poke that's gonna go back and forth here and not be able to do anything. So of course they go for the Hyper Voice, and it does a little too much here. And I really feel that um, because my it is burned and I can't really recover that well, I'm actually forced to sack it, and it really sucks because of that. Because Mantine can definitely have done a number of many of his pokes there. So of course we have the full fear and just going for another retaliate. He'll decide to sack off the Clefable. And this is so beautiful. It's so close for me to actually take it out. It actually survives, which I didn't expect. Of course, the reflect is up, so that is actually why. But the Rocky Helmet in conjunction with my life ball will put me in a very, very bad position and I'm actually forced yet again to switch in the poke and don't feel very comfortable bringing in and that's gonna be Bugra and um, the reason I did this was because I felt like it had probably taken Hyper Voice mm, ish um, not that um, <laughs> not that well of course so then anyway, I decided to uh, sack off Ether, which of course won't survive that Hyper Voice so I know that even go if I go into full fear yet again that he's most likely gonna bring the cliff key, but I actually want that. I want him to bring the cliff key because if I know a retaliate won't kill it, but at least I know he's gonna stay in to go for another uh, reflect. So that means I can bring back Goombugra and actually go for another slack off and get myself in such a good HP that I actually can stay around. But he will of course set up the boat, um, the boat screens there, and I know that I have two opportunities here. Either I take it out, which should be the better choice, or I switch out to my Manetric with Guts to protect and just trying to stall him out. Because, of course, the Glefki is such a bad range that it can't, it can't really do anything, it can't survive a hit here. So he's gonna go for Draining Kiss. I actually pull off two protects in a row, that's probably the first one I've done since I started the metagame. So I go for a Hidden Power here, not to take it out, uh, because I do want a few turns to go here. And he actually decides to stay in here because uh, he actually took some time before he chose to, um, before he decided to actually attack him. Uh, probably because he didn't want me to stall him out. But of course, I stayed long enough there to know that the uh, light screen is gonna go off. So I go for a Volt Switch. No, nah, didn't fare too well there. So I go back into Bugra, just activate the Sandstream really. He's gonna go for a Hyper Voice and this time it'll actually take me out. So I don't know the max minimum damage there, but it was definitely enough there. So anyway, I go into full, he decides to stay in. Uh, I was actually kind of baiting him, to be honest. Because I did really want to see him uh, <laughs> switch out to Gramble. So of course I go for the Giga Impact. I felt sadly short there after Intimidate. And he will go for the Earthquake and finish me off. So it's up to if Mene really my Mega Manecro can do this. And well, let's face it, he only got the Gramble and uh, Toki is left. So the thing, the thing is... Can I one hit KO a target tick or target kiss? And uh, well, let's just say I don't know what to say. I didn't do it. Sorry, guys. Had I have Thunderbolt, the story would might have been different. But sadly, guys, I do lose one one over here. And uh, yeah, it really really sucks. Uh, I must say, my opponent here, Effecto Nine, really really gave him a good challenge here and as a result he was a better player and I fell short here and well only thing I can say is the GG GG effect of mine so yeah it was actually not too many things I really could have done to change the outcome of this game that Fable really stopped my rampage for actually working and I think I spent around I think we went 
20-25 turns only Clefable against everything in my team and it did a very effective job to actually wear me down. Other than that, I mean, I probably could have done another play in the end there that I probably should have done, which have been that I actually sacked my Mega Manectric instead of uh, my Fourth, and hoping that he didn't switch out to Gramble, because a Retaliate would easily have killed it, and a Giga Impact would easily kill the target hits. But I didn't play like that, and uh, you know what? I really felt that we had such a close game that I didn't really mind losing that much, because uh, you know, it was actually really even. There was no... I have I didn't construct my team to defeat his team, and uh, his team was very well well put together. And I really felt it was a really honest battle here, and I think we both both learned a lot from this game. So, uh, thank you Factor 9 for this battle. It was an incredible good one, and I'm hoping our rematch will actually pull through here to get my badge. So, on that guys, look forward to more uh, Liteo Pokemon League uh, battles. And uh, other than that, have a good day. <laughs> Alright guys, take care. Bye.